Hello. Wanted to pop on here for a few minutes and bring Wednesday's Word with Pastor Wendy. As you can see, I am filthy today. I've just finished painting, working on our bus, and I figured, you know what, this is me. I don't need to dress up for you to see me. Hopefully a few of you will pop on here and hear this word from the Lord. You know, it's a good thing for us to be able to bring life back into something that no longer high Luan, um, bringing life back into things that many would discard and toss away or throw away and not have any more use for. Many people want to discard people that way. Um, many of the homeless that we serve or the very poor that we serve every Saturday are some of those. God, in his word, calls those the least of these. So, you know, God loves them. He loves them just as much as he loves everyone else who has wealth and materialism and all of those other things. But he said when we do things unto him, and when we do things unto the least of these, he calls the people who are poor and hungry and homeless the least of these. And he brings restoration, doesn't he? He brings restoration. So I thought today would be a good, good time to talk about what does it mean to restore? Because we have been in the process of restoring, quote, unquote, our food bus. We've been bringing a facelift to it this week. So all day today, I've been out there painting and it's in the middle of transformation and that's what god does with us in our lives is he transforms us hi Teresa. he transforms us he brings life back into things that are no longer seemingly available to have life anymore so i want to use as a key verse psalms 51 verse 12 and this is about restore so in psalms 51 verse 12 god tells us to we are this is a prayer restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Father God, please restore to me the joy of your salvation, your salvation. And then it says, and uphold me with a willing spirit. There's so much in this one little tiny verse. First of all, that word restore. What does it mean? We all think we know what it means, but I just wanna bring a little bit out. Restore means to bring back, to return, or to bring back into the former original state, to make new. Restore means to recharge, refresh, renew, revive, resuscitate, rejuvenate. And so as I was out there today painting the bus, and I'll post later today on our Facebook page, Helping the Homeless, um, before and after pictures. But, you know, I'm thinking about the condition of the paint that's worn out and it's flaking off and it's there's rust starting to develop, which is why we really needed to do this to you know, be good stewards of the property we have and prolong it and preserve it and make it last. And we need to do that with our bodies as well. We need to take good care of ourselves. Hi, James. Um, but restoring things, you know, God says to re be restored to the joy of our salvation. And I don't know how long everyone has been saved. I don't even know all of you if you are saved, but, and hopefully you are. But, you know, sometimes when we've been born again and saved for a long time, we get inundated with the day-to-day -day life and all the trials and tests that come our way. And the enemy wants to steal our joy. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't. God is the source of our joy. So if God's the source of our joy, how can anybody take it away? How can somebody take from us what they never gave us in the first place? Hey, Alyssa. So, hi, Michelle. So God's the source of our joy, not our circumstances, right? So God is the source of our joy, but sometimes we take our eyes off of him and we put our eyes on our circumstances and we get bogged down by the cares of this world. And God does not want that to happen. He wants us to keep our eyes on him the author and the perfecter of our faith. And he wants us to realize who our joy comes from. Hey, Marie, 
He wants us to realize who our help comes from and who our joy comes from. Hey, Ray, the joy of the Lord is our... Hey, Katie, see you too. The joy of the Lord is our strength, not the joy of our circumstances. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know, when we have our salvation, when we have an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ... That should be the basis of our joy. You know, regardless of, hi Paul, regardless of what circumstances we're dealing with right now, every circumstance we're in is temporary. Today is temporary. Yesterday was today yesterday, and now it's today. So think about that for a minute, right? Everything is temporary except for our salvation and eternity. So let us focus on the joy of the Lord. Because you know why? The Bible tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So when we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, we have to keep grounded in our joy. And we need to realize this prayer. Oh, Father God, rejoice, re restore to me the joy of your salvation. This prayer that David uttered in Psalms 51 verse 12, he's saying, restore to me the joy of your salvation, Lord. Father God, I have all these circumstances coming against me. I have pains in my body. I have lack of money in my bank account right now. I have this breaking and that breaking and this kid doing this and all these different things. Things happen in life, but don't get so focused on the things because they're going to change. But if we keep Jesus the center of our life, the center of our thought, right in front of our eyes, Jesus, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And our prayer is to restore, ask God to restore you. If you're feeling bogged down, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling worried or anxious over anything, you're not in your joy. You're not focused on who, hey Mike, you're not focused on who is your joy provider. Jesus is our joy provider. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So David in Psalms 51 verse 12, his prayer was, Dear Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. So we submit ourselves to God and we realize that he is our source of joy. <laughs> so as I'm painting this bus and I'm realizing this bus is kind of seemingly falling apart, there's paint flaking off the roof, there's paint flaking off the rear, the tires are worn, the tire uh, rims, I'm sorry, I'm not a mechanic, but the rims, hey, Jolinda, the rims are wearing out from the paint. And it's amazing what happens when we can restore what God has given us. When we can restore, God is the resurrector. He is the one that restores. Hey, Leslie. God can resurrect and restore any situation, no matter how, how bad it seems, no matter how hopeless it seems. God can bring new life into something that appears to be dead and falling apart and breaking down, okay? Don't ever give up. But remember to stay tapped into your joy. Your source of joy is Jesus, all right? Amen. Hey, Lisa, sis. So when we are re redoing things that are falling apart and when we are painting things and restoring things and bringing new life to things, it's an imitation of what God does in our life. You know, we are sinners. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and he had such an amazing plan for our lives, and he still does. So even if we get off track a little bit, it's okay. Repent. Tell him you're sorry. He'll forgive you. There's nothing that we can do that God won't forgive us for if we ask him to. We can never learn, earn God's love. We can never lose God's love. He is love, and he's our source of joy. Hallelujah. So when we realize that and renewing our mind of the truth of who God is and what he has done for us. Joy, that ever 
everlasting, ever-present joy should be bubbling up on the inside. When we get rid of all the crud in our life and cast it to Jesus and say, Jesus, fill me back up. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. I want to be so full to the brim that I'm overflowing with your joy. Why? Why? Because that's when Jesus can work in our lives. That's when Jesus will restore us. That's where he will bring us back to the former state. Before we, were, before we were lost in our trespasses and sins, before the enemy even came and deceived Adam and Eve, he had such a massive plan for this world. We were walking upright in the garden, they were. And God wants to restore us back to that state of being upright before him, to be a holy temple that the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in. So when I was out there scrubbing the bus, you know, John Garlett's came and he was so kind to bleach off and wash off the algae off the top of the bus so we can get it ready for painting the roof. And when I was scrubbing and my husband last night, we were sanding off the rust and the flaky old paints, preparing it so we can paint it today. Today we got it, all the white part of the bus except for the roof has been painted and it looks brand new. Hi, Sherry. It looks brand new. It's not brand new, but it looks brand new. Well, with us, what God does in our life, when we repent of our sin and we turn our back 180 degrees on that sin and we let God make us new, our spirit is brand new. It's a brand new created spirit as if it never existed before. And he's going to do so much with us. But it starts when we pray this prayer. Oh, God, restore me to the joy of your salvation. So again, to restore is to give back. God, give me back your joy. And to return or bring us back to the former original state. Father God, make me new again. Bring that joy fresh in me again. Hallelujah. And recharge. Restore means to recharge. We need to recharge ourselves. We need to be praying in the Holy Ghost every day. Every battery, I don't know about you, but I'm on an iPhone right now. My battery runs low when I use my phone all day, and I need to plug it in so I can recharge it. Well, we need to be restored. We need to be recharged. We need to charge up our spirit. And the way we do that is getting in the Word and praying in the Spirit and praying to God. So he will charge us up so we can just be full of him, full of him. And it also means to be refreshed and to be renewed and to resuscitate. You know, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation brings life back into those that have no breathing, right? Well, Holy Spirit is our breath. He is the very air that we breathe. So when we get into God's word, we're breathing in the life of God. Our eyes, our ears are hearing and seeing the word of God and it's getting in us and we have new life. So as I'm restoring the bus and bringing a new facelift, these thoughts came to me today and I wanted to share them with this Wednesday's Word with Pastor Wendy. So, Lori, I'm about ready to wrap up. We were talking about the word restore from Psalms 51, verse 12. And, you know, another verse just came up to me in my spirit. So I want to share this just in case there's someone who needs this. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17 says, For I will restore health to you and your wounds. I will heal, declares the Lord. So if one of you are out there suffering with pain, this is a verse for you. God is speaking this word right now. He says, I will, for I will, not I might, not that I'm thinking about it, but it's a promise from the Lord. He says, for I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. So that's the word for today. I pray for you. I love you. I thank you for watching, watching, and I hope that this has encouraged you. Father God, this word that went forth today, I pray it fell into good ground. Holy Spirit, watch over it. Bring it back to people's remembrance. Devil, we bind your hands off of it that you can't steal it out of their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.